I quote, glory lies in the attempt to reach one's goal and not in reaching it, Mahatma Gandhi. A very good morning to one and all joined here for the webinar series organized by Saundarya College of Law. First, I would like to thank our guest speaker, Professor Dr. C. Basavaraju, Director, School of Law, Chairman, Postgraduate Department of Law and Research, and Chairman, MBLEC, University of Mysore, for accepting our invitation and delivering a lecture on constitutional equality and its relevance to the present context in India. We welcome you, sir. Now, I would well like to welcome Sri Kirtan Kumar, CEO of Saundarya College, Saundarya Educational Trust, for joining us today. Now, I welcome our beloved principal, Dr. B.P. Mahesha, Saundarya College of Law, our faculties, dear students, and participants for the SEL webinar series. Before starting the session, I take it as a privilege to introduce the speaker of the day, Professor Dr. C. Basavaraj. Sir has obtained his graduation and post-graduation in English literature and pursued LLB and LLM in constitutional law and PhD on social justice. Sir is having an overall experience of 25 years in teaching. Sir served as vice chancellor in charge for the University of Mysore, also served as registrar in faculty of the University of Mysore. Sir served as registrar evaluation for Dr. Gangubai Hangal Music University. Sir served as chairman and member to board of studies in law and board of examination, University of Mysore. And also served as HOD, University of Mysore, and as a director, Center for Information and Technology. Sir visited Poland, Dubai, and China for presenting papers at international conferences. Sir also visited Bhutan for consulting the Chief Justice of Bhutan. Under Sir's guidance, 17 scholars have been awarded with PhDs and two scholars have completed MPhil. Sir published four books, 108 research articles, and participated in more than 186 national and international seminars. Sir also received 19 honors and awards. Sir also completed two projects sponsored by UGC. At present, Sir is serving as Director, School of Law, Chairman, Postgraduate Department of Law and Research, University of Mysore, and Chairman, MPLEC, University of Mysore. Today, we are very honored to have with us such an eminent academician, Dr. Professor C. Basavaraju, sir. On behalf of Saundarya College of Law, we welcome you, sir. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, audible, sir. Sir, on behalf of the institution, we welcome you, sir. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, good morning to one and all. Uh, firstly, I uh, extend my thanks to the institution, Saundarya College of Law and principal and uh, all his colleagues for having uh, invited me uh, for this uh, uh, lecture program. Uh, and I'm also very happy that uh, I have been interested with the a very important uh, uh, topic and a very vibrant topic in the Constitution of India, which has arrested the minds of various scholars, jurists, judges, and academicians is the issue relating to equality. Uh, if we just look into the, the concept of equality from the social point of view, we would always be remembered that equality has been recognized in various instruments, not only municipal instruments, but also international instruments. And even much earlier to the constitution came into force. We were talking about the concept of equality. And of course, with a bitter experience had by our constitutional makers, they have deliberately included and inserted the concept of equality into the constitution of India. The reason why the equality concept has been in inserted into the constitution of India is that for several centuries, some segments of the society, including the poorer sections of the society, they were deprived of certain privileges which were endowed by nature. For example, right to equality, freedoms, liberty, and all these 
were deprived by certain sections of the societies. So in order to ensure the freedoms, liberty, equality, and fraternity to all, irrespective of the religion, irrespective of the caste, irrespective of the community, the makers of the Indian constitution, they deliberately inserted the concept of equality into our Indian constitution. Once the concept of equality has been inserted now into the constitution of India, it has become the law of this country. And the constitution of India being a law of this country, it provides for various institutions or institutional mechanisms to ensure equality to all, irrespective of their status, irrespective of their community, and irrespective of the religion, and irrespective of their caste. For example, institutions like legislature, executive, and judiciary. The constitution highlights these three institutions and the fundamental obligation of these institutions is to see that the equality should be ensured to all irrespective of their status. So therefore, legislation, legislature has been conferred with a constitutional obligation to make such laws or enactments in such a way that it should ensure equality to all. And it is the obligation of the executive to see that the laws which were made by the legislature should be implemented. It should be executed so as to secure equality to all. And likewise, whenever the rights, liberties, freedoms of individuals across the country are violated under such circumstances, the institutional mechanism like judiciary should take up the issue and interpret the, the various laws, enactments, and even the executive directions, which are repugnant to the constitutional mandates. The, the judicial institution should also secure justice to all, including in the, in the form of equality. So when I said that all these three institutional mechanisms are an integral part of the Constitution of India, they are bound by the constitutional values, the constitutional mandate of equality. When I said equality, equality is a nothing but treating every individual across the country in an equal manner. The constitution enumerates the specific provisions for ensuring equality. For example, Article 14, 15, 16, 17, and so on and so forth. So while ensuring equality, there is a need to ensure social justice also. The concept of social justice and equality, they are intertwined. They, they, one cannot live without the other. So in order to ensure social justice, we need to ensure equality. Then what do you mean by equality? If you look at the, the constitutional mandate of Article 14, the constitution has imposed limitations on the power of the state. The power of the state is regulated through the Article 14 and Article 15 and Article 16 of the Indian Constitution. Why the constitution has imposed limitations on the power of the government or power of the state? The reason is that the state actions shall not be inconsistent with the constitutional mandate of equality. The state shall, the, shall not violate the equality to all in the process of making legislations, in the process of executing the laws and in the process of interpreting the laws. So therefore, a provision like Article 14, which provides that state shall not deny equality before law and equal protection of law. The state shall not deny equality before law and equal protection of law means the 
equality before law it indicates there there shall not be any inconsistency discrimination a polarization on any individuals on the other hand it also means the absence of any special privilege in favor of any individual in this country so therefore equality before law has also been observed by professor av daisy he has given a very good uh, observation regarding the concept of equality wherein he says legal equality means with us every official from the prime minister down to the constable or a collector of taxes is under the same obligation is under the same responsibility is under the same duty duty and without legal justification no discrimination can be made by any authority so therefore right from the prime minister down to the constable irrespective of their status every individual should be treated equally by the state through its state actions equal protection of law has also been ensured if the if the state in fact fails to provide equal protection to all irrespective of their status irrespective of their their uh, economic uh, stability then it is a violation of equality therefore the equality protection of laws which indicates equal protection shall be secured to all persons within the territorial jurisdiction of the union for the purpose of enjoyment of the rights which are conferred under the constitution without without going for any favoritism or without going for any discrimination or polarization so therefore these two principles equality before law and equal protection of law which are enshrined in the constitution they act as a limitation on the power of the state action state cannot violate this and make a, and make any appropriate laws or it can make any appropriate policies which are in discrimination to the individuals so therefore the guiding principle of equality is that all persons are all persons and all things which are similarly circumscribed which are similarly placed shall be treated equally see it is very difficult in india we are almost having a 136 crores population and for the whole population of this country 136 crores of population all individuals cannot be treated equally the reason being is that biologically every individual they are different women are different from men children are different from adults then certain sections of the societies they are different from others in terms of social problems economic problems cultural problems so therefore it is because of the the differences we find among various individuals the diversity which exists in india it is not possible to ensure equality in a stricto sensu then what is to be done how to ensure equality which is which is a man, which is a mandate under the constitution of india so therefore the, the there is a guiding principle there is a guiding principle of equality that provides that all persons or things which are similarly circumstanced which are similarly placed shall be treated alike both both in terms of privileges conferred and liabilities imposed in terms of liabilities and in terms of privileges conferred in both these they, these persons who are similarly placed shall be treated equally suppose they are not similarly placed they are different then under such circumstances they should be treated differently and that is what is called equality to put it otherwise to put it otherwise equality means among the equals law should be equal among the unequals law should be unequal so therefore every individual by birth itself they possesses different characteristics different features when that being the case we cannot equal one individual with that of another individual in order to ensure the 
equality which is ensured under Article 14 or 15. So therefore, what is to be done? We, have, we are guided by the general principle of equality. That is, persons who are similar in features, similarly circumstanced, shall only be treated equally and not others. So therefore, what is required is that individuals are to be treated equally for the purpose of ensuring the constitutional mandate of justice. The preambular objective itself, in fact, ensures that every individual shall be treated equally and to ensure justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. Probably these are all the four fillers on which the edifice of the Indian constitution is built. Several times an attempt have been made by judiciary in order to, in order to ensure that equality in fact, uh, is the hallmark of democracy. Equality and democracy, in fact, they go hand in hand. They cannot, they cannot be separated. Where there, where there is equality, there has to be democracy. A democracy principles must be an integral part of equality. So therefore, the Constitution of India, in fact, it provides that every individual, there must be an equal treatment of unequals is as bad as unequal treatments of equals. So therefore, equals should be treated equally, unequals should be treated unequally. There is a saying that like should be treated alike, unlike should be treated unlikely. See, this is what is called equality. And of course, Ivar Jenning, Ivar Jenning also points out that among, among the equals, law should be administered equally, among the equals. Among the unequals, law should be administered unequally. That is exactly what is called equality. It is not that uh, 136 cross population should be treated equally. It is impossible. Equal, if, if we think about that, it is a myth. So therefore, over a period of time, when issues relating to equality, discrimination of, discrimination of individuals, and uh, the discrimination of uh, the institutions and where inequality is violated, many times over a period of time, many issues came before the judicial institutions like Supreme Court and various high courts. Then the Supreme Court, in fact, uh, it identified a doctrine, a doctrine called doctrine of classification. In order to apply the equality, as it is provided under the Constitution of India, we have to, we are guided by the doctrine of classification. What is this doctrine of classification? The doctrine of classification is that the classification is allowed for the purpose of ensuring equality or application of equality. So the Supreme Court said, you can, you can classify the individuals, you can classify the institutions, you can classify the things into two categories. And by classifying, you can ensure equality. So therefore, why classifying, the Supreme Court said there are two criteria. One is the classification must be based upon some intelligible differentia. There has to be a scientific difference. What of things should be scientifically different from that of other group. So also in all kinds. So whenever there is a classification is made, such classification must be founded on intelligible differentia. That is the first uh, uh, criteria for making a classification for the purpose of application of equality. The second criteria is such intelligible differentia must have a relation with the object sought to be achieved under such a statute which makes such classification. See, the, the statute which makes such classification must be founded on some rational relation. 
the classification must have been relation with certain relation with other classification so therefore the second requirement is that such classification must be founded on intelligible differentia if there is no intelligible differentia then the classification is invalid and such a such intelligible differentia must have some kind of relation with the object of such legislation which makes the classification if there is no relation with the object with with which the legislation has made a classification then also the classification is invalid so therefore this is a traditional concept doctrine of classification the object of classification remember must always be lawful there must be a lawful classification the object of classification must be lawful and the classification must be scientific if the object of classification is unlawful then that cannot be sustainable so therefore classification must be scientific and classification must be lawful remember this is a traditional concept of classification in order to ensure or in order to application of equality clause of article 14 or 15 but remember for the first time the supreme court had to say in ramakrishna dalmia versus justice tendolkar in ramakrishna dalmia versus justice tendolkar the supreme court has laid down certain principles for the purpose of classification which are the classification which are permissible under the constitution say the cons the supreme court said in ramakrishna dalmia versus uh, the justice tendolkar a law may be constitutionally valid a, a single law which is made by the competent authority may be valid constitutionally valid even if it relates to a single individual even it relates to a single individual an account of some extraordinary features an account of some special circumstances or special reasons which are applicable to one individual with and which is not applicable to the rest of the society so when there is a classification is made between the two groups or two individuals or two institutions and one institution must have a special characteristics than that of the other group then only such classification is justified and constitutionally valid so for the so for the purpose of classification even as even even a single law a law may be constitutionally valid if it is applicable to a single individual or a single person if such individual possesses a a a, a special characteristics a special feature which is not possessed by the rest of the group or the other group which is classified so therefore this is a this is a constitutional uh, uh, scheme of the equality this has been found relevant in chiranjit lal versus uh, union of india in chiranjit lal versus union of india the supreme court had to say that any special legislation is made any special law is made for the purpose of taking over a, an undertaking taking over a management of a, an industrial undertaking or uh, or a company or a company where the company the directors of the company in fact uh, they are they are misusing they are abusing their power and where there is a mismanagement of the uh, directors mismanagement by the directors of the company and in order to in order to take over the management or the take over the the company a special legislation can be made suppose a special legislation is made in order to take over the the industry or the management because of the mismanagement by the directors which is which law is not applicable to the other industries is not violative of equality so therefore in chiranjit lal also so union of india the supreme court had to say that if there is a, a mismanagement in any company or any industry by the directors a special law may be made to take over the management and taking over the management through a special law which is not applicable to the rest of the society is not violation of equality in this case what happened the shareholders they questioned the validity of the law special law made by the parliament 
to take over the uh, the management and the court said it is not violation of equality because under special circumstances this law has been made so therefore this kind of a uh, attitude of the court in interpretation of the article 14 in fact uh, has become more relevant for the purpose of ensuring equality which is a mandate of the constitution so likewise likewise uh, there are various few other uh, illustrations in which the supreme court has identified the concept of equality how it can be ensured for example in nargis mirza versus uh, air india authority in nargis mirza versus air india authority in air hostess in air hostess after joining the service as an air hostess she became a pregnant when she became a pregnant during the course of her service her services were terminated solely on the ground that she has become a pregnant and of course immediately the the matter the matter was uh, 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 taken by the supreme court and the supreme court had to say that this is a violation of equality because the same procedure is not uh, found in any other departments across the country even though there is a specific rule in the air india authorities act the rule itself is violation of equality under article 14 so therefore in um, even in ds nakara versus union of india in ds nakara versus union of india is a case where the central government in fact initiated a new pensionary scheme a new pensionary scheme which is which is which is applicable for uh, those who are those who retired on a particular date and those who retired after the particular date a cut off date was fixed by the central government and those who retired before the cut off date in fact uh, the uh, this uh, scheme in fact uh, there it is not applicable to them and uh, beneficial scheme and those who retired after the cut off date it is they are they are entitled for it and naturally there is a discrimination and uh, the matter was taken to the supreme court and the supreme court had to say that what is the basis what is the rationale in in um, fixing the 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 the, the uh, cut the the particular date that is cut off date is there any reasons is there any rationality if there is the supreme court said there is no rationality and the and the and the union government failed to the project before the supreme court failed to con for convince the court the reasons for the rationality for fixing the cut off date and the supreme court this is a violation of equality and you and it is a discrimination on the part of the the central government employees who retired who retired before the cut off date so therefore see these are all the instances where the equality equality class of article 14 in fact uh, has been subjected to interpretation time and again by the supreme court but remember if you look at the the discrimination which is taking place across the country right from not only from the date of constitution came into force even prior to the constitution came into force for example on the on the ground of uh, the social barriers the social discrimination the economic discriminations see all kind of discriminations in fact uh, they have been there in india even after the constitution came into force the makers of the indian constitution they wanted they wanted to regulate this uh, discrimination for millions and millions of people in this country over a period of time they have they have not been allowed to to certain places they have, like temples hotels restaurants public places roads even some localities even some localities and even today we find that in some places some some sections of the societies for example scheduled caste and scheduled tribes people they are not allowed inside the barber shop they are not allowed inside the hotels they are not allowed to take and use the plates and uh, glasses which are kept for general public in the hotels and restaurants in rural areas see when such being the case how to ensure equality when the equality in fact is already stipulated in the constitution of india so therefore article 15 provides that state shall not discriminate any person solely on the ground of religion race 
cause, sex, and place of birth. State being the protector of the protector of the interest. State being the protector of uh, the the backward classes of people, and state being the protector of the constitutional mandate. It should ensure equality, equal treatment to all. So, therefore, constitution has imposed a limitation on the power of the state, wherein Article 15, subclass 1 says, state shall not discriminate any person solely on the ground of religion. Just because an individual belongs to a particular religion like Muslim or an Hindu or a Christ, it does not mean that he should be discriminated. It should be, state shall discriminate. So therefore, it is a violation of equality. State shall not discriminate just because he belongs to a particular religion. And state shall not declare and to provide only the financial assistance to a particular religious people only or religious tenets or religious denominations. So therefore, state shall not discriminate any person. Person includes even legal institutions also, legal persons also. Not only natural person, legal persons. State shall not discriminate any person solely on the ground of religion, solely on the ground of race. Just because a person belongs to a particular race, a particular cult, doesn't mean that he should be deprived of equality. So therefore, the state shall not discriminate any person solely on the ground of religion, race, and caste. Just because a particular group belongs to a particular caste, it doesn't mean that they are they are to be deprived of certain facilities. They are to be deprived of certain interest. It shall be the constitutional mandate. It shall be the constitutional duty of the court, uh, a constitutional duty of the state to ensure equality, equal treatment, and equal protection to all. So therefore, on the ground of religion, race, caste, and the ground of sex, just because, just because uh, uh, a person belo belongs to a uh, uh, if uh, it belongs to a female sex, doesn't mean that she should be denied, she should be ignored, she should be deprived, she should be discriminated, polarized. So the, this is a constitutional limitation on the power of the state. And lastly, on the place of birth. And the place of birth shall not be a criteria. It shall not be a reason for discriminating the individuals. So therefore, State, shall, state, in fact, is totally limited by its power. It cannot make any policy. It cannot make any law by, by discriminating the individuals solely on the ground of religion, solely on the ground of caste. Then place of birth, sex, and so on and so forth. Remember, we have been, we have been observing right from the day one of the Constitution of India and even a little before the constitution, how some certain people, certain sections of the society, they are not given, they are not given any opportunity or they are not given any access to some places. So in order to avoid this kind of discrimination in preventing certain individuals from having access to public places, access to the public uh, restaurants, access to public uh, entertainment house, access to public uh, uh, all places, public parks, public bathing guards and all that, the makers of the Indian constitution, they have inserted specifically a provision under Article 15, subclass 2, wherein the, no person shall be no person shall be prevented from having access to public shop, public restaurants, public bathing guards, or even any public place. A public place which also includes a private one where having public accessibility. For example, a theater, a theater is owned by a private individual and a private individual's property, if it is having access to public persons or publics in general, then it is a public, it's a public place. So therefore, where a private, a private place is having access to public persons or a publics, then it is a public place and every individual shall have access to such public places. If there is any denial, of access to such places is a violation of equality. And of course, I can, I can, I can quote some examples. For example, the people belonging to the scheduled cause and scheduled tribes, they are not allowed in certain places. For example, some temples, some hotels, some hotels. 
just because they belong to a scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. So therefore, any denial of access to any, not only scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, any individuals, any persons, if there is any denial of access by any persons, any government, any state, any authorities, it's a violation of their fundamental right to equality under Article 14, Article 15, subclass 2. And, but at the same time, we have to we have to give certain certain privileges. We have to give certain freedoms. We have to give certain uh, uh, certain facilities to some sections of the society in order to make them to come equal into that of others. Because our society, even though it is known as pluralistic society, Indian society is a multicultural society. Indian society is having a diversity, but still it is unequal. It is unequal. It is, it, it is, it is not uh, found. We are, we are not finding any 100% uh, any equality in a, in, a, in a diversity society or a pluralistic society. Then what is to be done? How to ensure equality in a society having diversity, in a society having multicultural cult culturalism or pluralist society? So therefore, the constitution makers, they have deliberately, the constitution makers, they have deliberately inserted the protective discrimination class, protective discrimination. See, on the one hand, the constitution says there shall not be any discrimination. If there is any discrimination, it is a violation of uh, equality. That is fundamental right to equality. On the, on the same breath, the constitution ensures protection to the equal discrimination. How? If you look at Article 15, subclass 3 and 6, 15, subclass 3 and 15, subclass 4 and 16, subclass 4. If you look at 16, 15, subclass 3, state can make any legislation, state can make any policy, state can come out with any projects for the development, for the improvement, for the protection of the interest of women and children. Nothing prevents the state from making any special provision for the advancement of women and children. See, that is one of the uh, one of the protections given to women and children. And this, uh, even though it seems to be discrimination, even though it seems to be discrimination or polarization compared to the other sections of the society, in fact, constitutionally, it is not discrimination. Constitutionally, it is protected. And this kind of discrimination, which is protected by the constitution itself, is what is called as protective discrimination. Protective discriminations. And of course, even in America also, in America also, this kind of protective discrimination is provided under the constitutions, under the constitution of America. So therefore, why do we require protective discrimination? We require protective discrimination to see that some sections of the societies, some, some minorities, some vulnerable sections of the societies like women, children, scheduled cause, scheduled tribes, minorities, they should, they, they should be given some assistance, some financial assistance, some economic assistance, some incentives, some privileges, some concessions, so that they can compete with the rest of the society and in order to make the society balanced. Because our society is imbalanced. Our society is uh, uh, not equally uh, equal in nature. It is unequal because of uh, the diversity we have. We are living in we are we are living in a di dichotomy, a dichotomy between the rich and the poor. We are living in a dichotomy between the minority and majority. We are living in in the dichotomy between the wise and virtue. We are living in the dichotomy between the the male and female. All kinds of discrimination, the dichotomy, in fact, has to go. Unless and until this dichotomy is, is to be abolished, is abolished, I think we cannot ensure equality, what is reflected under the Constitution of India. Our makers of the Constitution of India, Dr. especially the chairman of the drafting committee, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, with the assistance and with the help of the other colleagues, he has, uh, he has taken uh, a very stringent uh, uh, step in incorporating this equality class vibrantly in order to see that this <coughs> Indian society, which is known for pluralistic society, 
which is known for multicultural society, which is also known for inequality, inequality in terms of socio and economic problems needs to be strengthened, needs to be ensured equality. So therefore, the concept of equality, in fact, has been embedded in the constitution as a fundamental right of all citizens. It is not only for a, a particular community or a particular group, it is, it is ensured for every individual and every uh, sections of the society. See, this is the traditional concept of equality as provided under the Constitution of India, Article 14, 15. But after 19, 1976, the approach of this traditional doctrine of classification, traditional doctrine of classification has been, has been overtaken by a new approach or a new concept of equality. The traditional concept is that if you want, if you want to uh, uh, apply equality class, you have to make a classification between two groups, two institutions, and or two groups of things. And then you have to find out whether, uh, whether uh, the classification is founded on intelligible differentia or not. And such intelligible differentia, whether it is having any rational relation with the objects sought to be achieved under the statute, which makes the legislation. This is the criteria. If two tests are not passed, then classification becomes invalid and uh, uh, there, is a, there is a violation of equality. But after 1976, Justice Chandrachod, Justice Krishnaya, and Justice Bhagavati, Justice Krishnaya, Justice Chandrachod, Justice Bhagavati, they came up, came up with a new approach. They invented or they evolved a new doctrine a new approach, how to, how to apply equality to all, irrespective of the religion, irrespective of the caste, irrespective of the sex, and irrespective of the community and all that. The new approach adopted by three, these three justices, Justice Chandrachud, Justice Bhagavati, and Justice Krishna here is that they said, equality and arbitrariness they are sworn enemies. Equality and arbitrariness are they are sworn enemies. One belongs to the rule of law and the other belongs to the whims and caprice of absolute monarch. Beautiful. And of course, this, this new approach itself, in fact, stipulates that equality and arbitrariness, they are enemies. They are sworn enemies. Where there is an equality, there can't be arbitrariness. And where there is an arbitrariness, there can't be equality. And equality, it belongs to the rule of law. And arbitrariness, which, which, which confines to the whims and caprice or whims and fancies of the absolute monarch. So therefore, where an act of the state is arbitrary, where the state, in fact, um, uh, comes out with any policy, comes out with any legislation, comes out with in, uh, any uh, projects which are of which are of arbitrary in nature. So therefore, where the state act is arbitrary, the inference is that it is unequal. It is unequal, and it is it is violation of equality. So where there is where there is an arbitrariness exists in the state action, the the inference is that there is a violation of equality. But where there is no arbitrariness, the inference is that there is a equality. So therefore, equality and arbitrariness, they cannot go together. They cannot go together, but they repel each other. So therefore, now it is very easy. Now it is very easy for the courts to find out whether the, whether the act of the state is uh, valid or not, whether the act of the state has violated equality or not. Because, because of this doctrine, new doctrine, a new approach. And this new approach was adopted by the Supreme Court for the first time in E.P. Rayapa or the state of Tamil Nadu. In E.P. Rayapa or the state of Tamil Nadu, the, court, the Supreme Court had to say that equality and arbitrariness, they are sworn enemies. And there, wherever there is an wherever there is a arbitrariness in the state action, there can't be equality. So therefore, again, the court need not apply the classification doctrine and then say that whether it is a violation of equality or not. Not necessary. Now, 
After 1976, this new approach is enough for identifying the whether whether the act of the state is violation of equality or not. Even the Supreme Court in Menaka Gandhi versus uh, Union of India had to say through Justice Bhagavati that Article 14 it always strikes arbitrariness. Article 14, which is a rule of law, it strikes arbitrariness in the state action and, and ensures fairness and equality of treatment. It ensures fairness as well as the equality of treatment. So therefore, we can say that the whole that the whole constitution, the Article 14 of the Indian Constitution, in fact, uh, it is it is a non-arbitrariness. The the non-arbitrariness pervades the entire Article 14 like a brooding omnipresence. If you look at the Article 14 itself, the inference is that there is a non-arbitrariness. So therefore, under the new dimension of uh, the uh, equality class, where an action is arbitrary, it must be necessarily involve negation of equality. So if an act of if an act of state, in fact, involves an arbitrariness, for example, if an order is issued by the government of uh, Karnataka, arbitrarily, arbitrarily, that means uh, uh, one kind of uh, one kind of order to one individual and thus another kind of order to another individual in an arbitrary manner, in a whimsical manner, then it is a violation of equality. The the the, the inference is that there is a there is a violation of equality. So therefore. Where there is an arbitrariness, there is a there is no equality, and where there is equality, there is no arbitrariness. There is no arbitrariness, and of course, even uh, uh, the Supreme Court in Mohini Jain versus uh, State of Karnataka. In Mohini Jain versus State of Karnataka, also the Supreme Court had to say that when the Karnataka government imposed more capitation fees for uh, the students of non-residents of Karnataka in various engineering and medical colleges. The court had to say that it's a violation of equality. More capitation fees, which is unreasonable, which is unreasonable to the extent that the, the non-residents students of Karnataka, they are not able to pay so much of uh, capitation fees in order to join for engineering and medical courses by uh, in the uh, state recognized educational institutions. And uh, under such circumstances, the Supreme Court had to say that this is a violation of equality the very order of this government of Karnataka fixing more capitation fees for the non-residents of students of Karnataka is a violation of equality, is a violation of equality. And the, another important class is uh, equality in terms of employment. Look at the, even the article 16 of the Indian constitution in terms of employment. See, the state shall not make any discrimination. State shall not make any unequal treatment in, the pub, in providing public employment. While providing public employment, there shall be equality principle shall be applied. But even there also, for the purpose of ensuring equality, even to the, the certain sections of the society, downtrodden sections of the society who are not adequately represented in the state, services or in the union services. So where the certain sections of the societies who are not adequately represented either in the state service or in the central service, they should be provided some concession, some benefits, some relaxation in the public employment or in the form of reservations, in the form of reservation. So therefore, Article 16, Class 1, it is a general rule of equality and article 16 subclass 4 is an exception to article 16 subclass 1 wherein article 16 subclass 4 says nothing prevents the state from making any special provision any special provision in the form of reservation for the backward classes those who are socially educationally backward classes for for providing a public employment and of course recently uh, uh, even reservation uh, in the reservation is also extended to the economically backward classes. 10% reservation has been extended to economically backward. When the constitution was drafted, there are only three categories are entitled for reservation in public employment. The first one is 
members belonging to the socially socially backwardness and economically backwardness both they are socially and economically backwardness they are entitled for reservations and also scheduled caste and scheduled tribes but now even the the other class economically forward class they are also 10% reservation has been given see why this kind of a reservation is contemplated under the constitution of india in the public employment is to see that equality should be ensured because our society is in Im imbalance every day the rich people are becoming richer and richer and the poor people are becoming poorer and poorer and uh, the whole the whole natural resources available in the state that is in the entire country is enjoyed by just only 3 to 4% of the population and rest of the population they are not enjoying the res natural resources which is equally required to be enjoyed by them constitution has not made any discrimination but in reality the 97% of the population they are deprived of enjoying the natural resource only 3% is it equality what we are talking about in the indian constitution is it what uh, the constitution speaks about uh, the uh, concept of equality is it what our constitutional makers had in their mind to ensure equality so these are all the issues in fact uh, which come before us for the purpose of uh, understanding the concept of equality as a fundamental rights now suppose the fundamental rights are violated what do we what do we do how to ensure how to ensure remedy the constitutional makers they have also provided certain remedies constitutional remedies constitutional remedies under article 32 under article 226 of the indian constitution article 32 empowers the supreme court to enforce the fundamental right wherever the fundamental right to equality is violated or your uh, uh, freedoms are violated or even the right to life is violated any fundamental right is violated your fundamental right is enforced by the supreme court by virtue of article 32 of the indian constitution likewise constitution also also empowered the high courts under article 226 to enforce fundamental rights and also other rights other rights means the ordinary rights which were which were which, which are ensured under ordinary legislations so therefore constitutional remedies have been provided the court the supreme court or high courts they are entitled to either to issue directions or orders or writs or writs in the nature of writ of habeas corpus writ of mandamus writ of certiorari writ of prohibition and writ of covariant for the purpose of ensuring constitutional remedies depending upon the requirement depending upon the requirement the writ will be issued depending upon the requirement for ensuring the uh, for enforcing the fundamental rights directions can be issued orders can be issued so therefore constitutional remedies have been provided but remember constitutional remedies have been provided fundamental rights have been provided but why substantial number of population in this country have not been able to enjoy this constitutional benefits why substantial number of population has not been able to enjoy fundamental right to equality why they have been still subjected to unequal treatment why they have been subjected to discrimination the reason is obvious that majority of the people they are economically poor they are economically poor they are ignorant they are illiterate they are not able to they are not able to invoke the jurisdiction of the courts they are not able to go to the go to the courts and ensure their and to enforce their fundamental rights they are unable to enforce they are unable to go to the court because of poverty because of penury because of illiteracy and ignorance because of economic instability for them should the fundamental rights be a distant dream and therefore justice krishnayer in one of his judgments he beautifully quotes the mere the mere enumeration of the fundamental rights in the indian constitution 
the mere enumeration of the fundamental rights in the Indian constitution is not suffice unless and until there has to be a mechanism. There has to be a mechanism, a strong mechanism to, to get back the justice, to get back the rights to, by enforcing the fundamental rights. What is that mechanism? Yeah. The mechanism is public interest litigation. The mechanism is public interest. See, today, through the mechanism of public interest litigation, there are many number of publics, there are many number of public organizations, public institutions, public organizations, public associations, or publics having some interest, bona fide interest. They are, in fact, uh, helping the poorer sections of the society. They are helping the people who have lost their fundamental rights. They are helping the people who have, who have who have been subjected to discrimination, polarization, and all that through public interest litigations. Any public can, can, make, an, can make an application either under 32 or 226 to enforce the fundamental right to equality or any other fundamental right for the purpose of ensuring the constitutional safety, constitutional, constitutional protection to all irrespective of their religion, irrespective of their sex irrespective of the caste and irrespective of the place of birth and of course therefore uh, the con the concept of equality in fact which has arrested the minds of various scholars various uh, statesmen for the simple reason that even today even today after completion of 72 years of constitution came into force have we achieved equality 100% equality or constitutional equality in a strict sense? We have not. What could be the reason? The reason could be there is no strict implementation of the constitutional mandates. Why? It is because of the discretionary of the state. So even though there is an obligation on the part of the state under the, under the constitution, wherever there is no adequate representation is given to certain sections of the society, there the state can, can make any special provisions, special privileges, special legislation in order, to, in order to offset the imbalance. See, that is not being done. We have already crossed, we have already crossed 72 years but still we have not able to achieve equality. And of course, the, the socially and educationally backward classes, including the scheduled cost and tribes, only to some extent, they, so only to some extent, they, are, they have become, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, have, they are enjoying certain rights of constitution, fundamentals. But rest of the population, even within the scheduled cost and scheduled tribes, only one or two percent of the population of scheduled cost and scheduled tribes, they, they must have got the constitutional benefits. But what about the rest of the population? Education is still there poor. They are ignorant. They are illiterate. Economically poor. Culturally background. Culturally, they are backward. So therefore, there is a need to, to re-look into the concept of equality. How to ensure equality? How to effectively enforce equality? And how to implement equality through various legislations, through various schemes, and through various programs. And I'm sure that all the legal fraternity will definitely contribute in the days to come for real ensuring of equality class of Article 14, 15, 16, 17. I did not mention the 17, Article 17, abolition of untouchability. It was the abolition of untouchability was inserted in, in the constitution from the inception itself. But even today, do we have, uh, do, we, do we find uh, the equal society? Do we find a society where there is no, where there is no uh, inequality, injustice, untouchability, performance of untouchability? Even today, the performance of untouchability is still in vogue across the country in different forms. Maybe, maybe uh, the scheduled caution, scheduled tribes and the, the, uh, the vulnerable sections, the marginal sections, they might, they might have got some employment, public employment. They might have got education, but still the, the element of the element of untouchability still exists in this society. We have to work. We have to endeavor 
for abol real abolition of untouchability in the real sense in our society then only we can build an egalitarian type of society which is thought of by our social reformers like social reformers like uh, the gautam buddha social reformers like basavanna periyar dr ambedkar it is only possible only when we build an egalitarian of society which is free from all kinds of inhibitions all kinds of uh, exploitations or all kinds of injustice in order to give respect to our constitution which is the law of this country and we have accepted we all accepted this constitution as our law our law of this land and we need to give respect by ensuring equality to all and that is what my uh, my message in this uh, talk for you thank you thank you very much sir for your enlightening speech how the constitutional equality has been provided by the constitution but till now not yet implemented properly because of lack of mechanism and also you have uh, highlighted the two uh, equality principles equality before law as well as equal protection of law along with articles 14 15 and 16 thank you very much sir for providing beautiful information and informative to the students also and dear students any queries please post in the chat box Yes, students. Any queries? So one question. Yeah. Many rural parts. Many rural parts in India have people who are not aware of these provisions and just start living to overcome poverty. What would be the best method to educate them and speak for their rights? The best. The best way of uh, tackling this problem is. first of all the state shall take adequate measures to inculcate the basic knowledge of indian constitution how many how many people in this country are are have understood the constitutional rights not 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 even 5 to 6% of the population of this country they are, are aware about the constitutional mandate of their rights fundamental rights then how then how about the 95% of the population if they are kept in darkness what kind of enforcement constitutional mandates can we anticipate it how can the poorer sections can question the the inactivity of the state in not enforcing the constitutional rights so we have to make them we have to, we have to impart the knowledge in different ways different mechanisms we have to conduct awareness program state shall take adequate measures it must come out with various plans and programs take the constitutional issue, constitutional uh, uh, fundamental issues down to the common section of the society let them also understand let them also understand what are their their rights in the constitution when the rights are violated let them also understand how to enforce those rights how to go to the court how to get back the rights see if these are not if these are not highlighted and uh, uh, bring to the knowledge of the the bulk of the population especially the poorer section of the society then according to justice krishna has says it's of no use the entire constitutional scheme is of no use unless and until it has, it, it it is put into use it is put into use yes any other questions thank you sir any other questions students Yes, sir. one more question, sir. Yeah. This is from Gina Thomas, sir. Yeah. When the rulers of the country make amendments to the rules and regulations, do you think that fundamental rights of all the individuals are taken into consideration? Because of late, we use lot of disparity. See, constitutionally speaking, uh, there are two things to uh, answer. The first thing is constitutionally speaking. 
no rulers in this country including the parliament has power to destroy and damage the fundamental rights it has already it has already been laid down in uh, keshavananda bharati versus state of kerala 1973 fundamental rights the basic structure of the constitution cannot be damaged or destroyed which are the basic structure equality is the basic structure freedom is the basic structure liberty is the basic structure how can these basic structures can be damaged through an amendment through a, a amending power it is not possible amendment is the the power to make amendment is provided in the constitution in order to amend certain sections of the certain rules of the, uh, the constitution or certain articles of the constitution to suit to the existing circumstance not to destroy the the way fundamental uh, structure of the constitution itself because the the entire the entire edifice of the constitution the entire structure of the constitution is built on the premise of equality justice and liberty and fraternity they are not subjected to amendability even by the rulers even by the whole parliament thank you sir one more question sir from jay kumar sir what are the exceptions to the right to equality of opportunity in matters of public employment exceptions yes sir see in in, in respect of uh, public uh, employment exceptions uh, uh, remember article 16 sub class 1 to 16 sub class 4 in fact uh, it it provides for equal treatment of all to all public in the in the in the matter of public employment equal treatment but the exception is that persons who belong to the backward classes who are identified as a backward classes who are going to identify the individuals as backward classes backward class commissions backward class commission which is appointed by the president of india will identify who are the backward classes those backward classes including the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes whose representation is not adequate in the state services or in the union services the they may be accommodated in the services in the form of reservation it is a it's a, it's an exception to the general class of equality under article 161 article 164 is an exception to article 161 thank you yes. sir Yes. Now I request our beloved principal, Dr. B. P. Maheshwar, sir, to deliver the presidential remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, recalling me my uh, LLM classes. Sir was my teacher, and uh, the same tempo from the beginning to end. Uh, it's a it's a God gift. sir thank you for accepting our invitation to deliver a talk on right to equality and present day context as uh, rightly observed by sir that uh, part 3 of indian constitution guarantees certain basic rights to all the citizens irrespective of their caste race birthplace religion or gender it is rightly observed by the speaker that right to equality is hallmark of democracy the basic rights are known as fundamental rights which are justifiable these are deemed to an essential part of uh, indian constitution as they protect rights liberty of the citizens of the country against any misuse or intrusion by the government with a power delegated to them in a democracy these are the, the negative obligation of the state and citizens these rights try to achieve the goals set out in the preamble that is justice liberty equality fraternity and dignity no doubt the right to equality can be understand in a two different approach 
first one is a positive right which demands to be treated equally the another aspect negative right which prohibits unequal treatment article 14 to 18 in detail the constitution makers guaranteed right to equality no doubt the constitution makers also given provision for classification does it mean that uh, the, the right to equality can be you know used as a tool to discriminate there are test of valid classification the first one intelligible differentia that is intelligent reason for a classification the second one rational nexus relationship between classification and desired result in order to protect the interest of socio economic educational backward persons and to protect women and child the state can pass a legislation any legislation which is coming under the umbrella of protective discrimination classes are not against right to equality sir has given a, a plethora of examples where in which the honorable supreme court rejected the differential treatment and also uphold a few positive approach adopted by the government for inequal treatment in order to protect socio economic interest of the persons who are there in lower strata sir our institution was established with the motto of protecting the interest of a common man the sundar education trust was established to give education with nominal price our founder sri sundarya p manjappa sir with a motto of giving education to a common man with an affordable price established the trust as and today we have uh, seven good institutions from ug to pg wherein uh, more than uh, 3000 students in a year getting an education with a nominal cost our ceo kirtan kumar sir very you know dedicated and uh, dynamic person always telling one thing give a best information and knowledge to a common man with this interest we started the lecture series webinar series this is a third uh, uh, webinar lecture sir with all art it is my privilege to propose vote of thanks on behalf of sundar education trust sundar group of institutions on behalf of uh, our management on behalf of our uh, teaching and non teaching and our uh, student side thank you for accepting our invitation sir also thank my teaching and non teaching faculties uh, students and participants of uh, today's webinar for your patient listening thank you sir thanks to all thank thank Th thank you dr mahesh principal of the college and i, I and whole heartedly i thank your uh, uh, your management your management so gracious and uh, as you said your management is so gracious towards the poorer sections of the society i am very happy uh, because that should be the motto of every educational institution and i also thank all your colleagues and uh, all the participants uh, who are in this uh, program and i thank one and all thank you thank you very much sir thank and thank you students let us join in the next webinar series thank you have a nice day thank you